Most people learning Rue come from CFOP, which is why the tutorial draws on so many CFOP elements. But in this video, if you want to get more into Rue and see more of its potential, then I'll show you some very specific Rue tips. Number one, using any pair. Not every scramble has a corner edge pair made, but often there will be one. And if you use a more fixed color scheme, such as white on the bottom, then you cannot use a pair like this. So in order to use any pair on the cube, you have to be what's called X to Y color neutral. So being able to start with white or yellow as your bottom color will help you take advantage of any pair you see on the cube. So anytime you do find a pair, just take this color and one of these two. So either the yellow blue edge, which is this one, or the yellow red edge, which is this one, and then just pair it together with its center. So here it would be easier to pair with yellow blue and we could do it like this. And that makes our first square. And then we can just continue with this pair here. You could be completely color neutral, but it's not necessary to be able to take advantage of every pair. Number two, making a full square at once. So in the Rue tutorial, I kind of stuck to a method that's similar to CFOP that helps you get into Rue, but is not ultimately the best way to move forward. So what I did was, for example, put a cross edge here and then solve this and this. And so that would make a square, but instead often you can find a way to make a pair and find the edge and just put them all together at once. So once you find the three pieces needed for a square, you just need to pair the corner with either one of them. In this case, it's gonna be harder to pair this one with this one. So we could actually just do F2 and that pairs this one. So at first it's going to be very uncomfortable making pairs that include two whites on it because that's not what you normally do for CVOP. But that is something you will have to get used to. So make sure you try and use it whenever you can. So there's no easy way around this. You just have to do a lot of practice and a lot of slow solves to get this down. Number three, first block, single piece inserts. So here I'm working on first block. I have a pair right here and I wanna insert this edge over here to make my first square. Now, if you know keyhole in CFOP, then that can really help here. For example, I can do any D move to get this corner out of the way and then insert this one with L prime to L and then go back. In Rue, you can do that and it's great, but sometimes there are even better ways you can do it. In this case, it barely helps, but we don't have to do the first L prime over here. We can just insert the edge and then go back. And now a similar case where the edge is oriented the other way. In CFOP, what you would do if you were doing keyhole is you'd have to do F moves to insert this. But in Rue, you just move that away and you can just insert this one with one F move and then go back. Now a similar case, but these two are solved and the corner is not, I can move this one out and just insert the corner in here like this and then go back. And unlike CFOP, this actually works for corners where the white or yellow sticker is facing up. So in this case, I can move this one out and then this one, I'll move it all the way back here and then just do R2 and that inserts it. Number four, using the M slice for second block. So here I have my first block on green with white bottom. I will pair up these two pieces now and then generally how we use the M slice, uh, in this case, I'm gonna use a wide move, which is equivalent to using the M slice as well. How we generally use it is since the right color is blue, then we're going to try and get blue on the not top every time. So here, if blue is on top, then it's probably not how we want it. So it doesn't hurt to try and do this. And then since you've used the M slice, you will now reorient it. So now blue can attach to the center. Now, in this case, it's not necessarily what we wanna do right away because we also wanna use the M slice to move bottom edges to the top. So in this case, I can move this edge out, attach it, and then attach this to make the square. Now, when you use the M slice, you wanna be strategic about how you can immediately pair pieces up. Just like in CFOP, where when you take pieces out of slots, you wanna pair them up. In this case, when you take pieces out of the M slice, if you can, you wanna pair them up. So you take a look at your corner and if white's not on the top, then look at what the top color is and that's blue. So we notice for this edge that if we take it up using M prime, we get orange on top, which is not good. If we do M2, blue is on top and it matches. So that's good. Now, when we do M2, it pushes it to the back. So we're gonna move this corner to the back as well. So they pair together. So that's gonna be right here and then push them together like that. And then all we have to do is insert it afterwards. Now here's a similar case, and this time we see that the corner is not oriented correctly. We have white on top. In this case, if it's a front slot, just hold it above the slot and do that. And then this will turn it into a white on the side. And then here we have blue on top, and M prime brings blue to the top. So we are going to make sure that they're together here as we pair them up. Now in this case, it's not gonna be quite as nice because it is attached to the square and we need, need to detach it first and then we can insert it. But that's generally how you wanna pair things during a second block. Now there are cases where the edge is in the top layer where you can use the M slice to your benefit. So in this specific case, we can take this edge away and then move the corner and just move it back up and that immediately pairs them. Or for this case, when it seems like you'll have to rotate if you're doing CFOP, you just have to do M prime to push them together and then you can just insert. 
So this one falls into the general category of if you're really not sure what to do and this side color for the edge doesn't match your side color for the block, then you can just do an M move and that will immediately make it a rotationless CFOP case. Now just keep in mind, you have to be careful because that's not always the best way to do it. And if you're not trying to be efficient with Roo, then you shouldn't really be using Roo. So when you're doing a slice, just to reorient the edge, make sure you know that it's the best way to do it. Number five, transitioning from EO to LR. Once you know how to do all of the edge orientation cases, then make sure you look at the left and right edges as you do it. So for example, for this EO case, four bad edges on top, um, I'm just gonna start doing it and watch the green and blue. So here's blue, here's green. And so for the last move, instead of doing M prime, I'm just going to have them both on top now. So I might as well do M as my last move. And so that makes one at the bottom and one at the top, which is generally better. So then here I can just put them opposite and just do LR normally. So put them both at the bottom and then get them to the top. Number six, two special LR cases. So we're solving left and right, which are blue and green. And in this case, once you get them opposite of each other, if you notice that one of them is solved, then here what we're gonna do is push it through the top. So the first move is going to be M prime. And then here we're gonna just do U2 as normal and then M prime to solve them. Now in this case, we have blue here and green here. And if you notice that this one is opposite of the two, then we're going to push it down to the bottom. That's like this. And similarly, you should be able to mirror these front and back. So if green is here and blue is here, it is opposite. So we're gonna push it to the bottom. So that starts with M prime. Number seven, predicting last four edges. So as you do what's most likely going to be an M2 to solve your left and right edges, usually people end up pausing here to take a look at what their edge case is, which is not what you should do. Instead, from the top, you should be able to look at it and instantly know what your next few moves are going to be after you do the M2. So I'll tell you about the recognition technique I use. I don't know if anyone else uses this because I learned about this way too long ago. And Rue is not my main method, so I don't know if it's the best way. I have tested and sometimes it's not the most efficient by one move. So, I mean, it saves a pause, so it's what I use. So as you do the M2, chances are you have this sort of L shape, and even if the center in the middle is wrong, it's still an L shape. So your M2 will push away anything in the middle. We push that edge away, and then remember that this edge was on the front, so we'll move this edge now to the front. Next, this can either be a solo edge, so it's just an edge with the rest all being a different color, or it can be attached to the correct center, such as this one right here. So if it is a solo edge, do an M move that moves it through the top. So here, if we do M, it goes to the bottom. So instead we will do M prime as it stays on top. So M prime keeps it in the top, and then we're going to do U2 because all of your U moves during L4E are U2. So this recognition technique gets you this far. It gets you two moves into your L4E, but you don't have to pause if you're good at this. The rest is intuitive, but I can kind of explain. If we have three different colors here, then we're gonna need to do a double swap after. So swap and swap. But for example, in this case, which is pretty much the same, we're going to do M2 and then move this one here. And we're gonna move it through the top because it's a solo edge. U2, in this case, I pretty much did the same thing, but I noticed all of these are solved. So I know it's just gonna be solved at the end. Now for this case, again, we're about to do M2 to solve our left and right edges. In this case, our L is over here and we're gonna move this back edge away when we do M2. So of course, put this one at the back. Next, since this is not a solo edge, our first move will move it to the bottom instead. So for non-solo edges, make sure you don't move it through the top like this, you move it to the bottom. And then of course, U2. And then we just take a look at this again. So again, this middle strip tells you what to do next. Uh, this one is solved, so no reason to bring that to the top. We'll bring this one to the top, so that'll be M prime. And then of course, U2, because all the U moves are U2. In our next category of cases, this is the broken bar case. So in this case, our bottom color is white. We notice that there's a white bar here, but as we do M2, it's going to break that bar. This is actually the same case, even though it doesn't look like it. Because here, when you do M2, you can see that the white will definitely not make a bar. So if you know you'll get a broken bar case, then what you do is you look at one of the side colors. So in this case, red, and the red center is here. So I'm going to match them afterwards. So M2, and then match it. Next, always do M prime U2, M2 U2 and then one more move. Now in this case, since it's a broken bar case, I'm gonna follow the exact same steps. So I'm gonna do M2 and here's the orange, there's the orange, I'll try to match them. And then I will do M prime U2, M2 U2. Now sometimes you'll have to do a little bit more afterwards, but that's the general idea. Now this one is the made bar case because this time when I do M2, this center is already wrong between them. So obviously my M2 will make a full bar. So the first step you do after the M2 is the same as before. You look at this, you look at this and see um, how you're gonna match this edge to the correct center. These don't match. So you're gonna move this the other way instead. So M2 puts the orange back here. You'll move this one here. Afterwards, always do M2. 
Now this is the same case because we have a full bar that won't get broken. So you're gonna do M2 and again, this and this, they match. So I'm gonna move that to the back. And then afterwards, always do M2 and maybe a little bit more afterwards. All right, thanks for watching. And if you liked learning Rue from me, well, I'm sorry to say I'm not gonna have that many more Rue tutorials as I use CFOP, but for more stuff on Rue, check out some channels I have listed in the description. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.